according to Kadampa tradition, there's a kind of two tradition, traditions. Some Kadampa said, you shouldn't have a lot of teachers, a lot of guru. You must rely on very few gurus who have an experience, who have some knowledge. Because if you have a lot of gurus, if you don't you know, have a respect, don't have a you know, pure belief in fact, guru is not good for you. That's why I say you shouldn't have a lot of gurus. Some other master says it's okay to have a lot of gurus. And finally, they make a conclusion. As a beginner, as a beginner, as a who have a, you know, no good experience, how to you know have a teacher, you shouldn't have a lot of teachers. Once you have a you know, once you know how to rely on teachers, how to respect, how to give a respect to teacher, then you no problem you shouldn't have a lot of teachers. As a beginner for us, you know, you should have a very you know, one or two or three guru who has a knowledge, who has experience. After a few years, you know, after 10 years, then you can have a lot of gurus, no problem. Right now, we are just studying, okay? We are just studying how we should have a teacher, how we should rely on teacher. Why I should rely on teacher? Without teacher, why not I can, you know, achieve in Latin? So right now, we're going to study about how to rely on teacher. Then I hope you remember that, that you know, the root had dreams at the page number 104, right? 104, this is the root heading of the, this uh, about the Guru. The sequence in which the disciples are to be taught actual instruction. This means it says a true, the root of the path, devotion to spiritual guide, and the stages on how to change the mind after you have begun to rely on him or her, on him. Yeah, him, you should not think only a man, okay? It's like a child is in a car. Tha can be man and tha can be female. He. Well, he and it depends if we say he is equal both, the male and female, he. So, look at this. First, there's the root of the path. The root of the path. Devotion to a spiritual guide. So, we, in order to achieve, you know, Buddhahood or Nirvana, we have to go through the path. The faith towards Guru is the root of the path. Without having, you know, pure faith towards Guru, you cannot have a path. That's why it's the root of the path. The next, you know, and they said the stages on how to train the mind after you have a beginning to relate to him. After you find a teacher, the teacher must teach how to train your mind, how to practice all the parts. The next hidden, the root of the path, it has a true, right? What to do in your meditation season, season, and what to do between meditation season. Here meditation is talking about meditation on Guru. Okay? Guru. Then the first has a like a I think uh, three headings. The preparatory duties, how to pursue the main path of the season and what to do end of the season. So these are the headings. So now we are going to study about, you know, the root uh, devotion spiritual guide, uh, the devotion to spiritual guide. So in order to go through your practice, first you need to rely on a teacher. 
lone teacher, not it's just it doesn't really know you met a person, you met, met a you know, teacher. So rely. So in order to rely on someone, you must have a trust, right? Without trust, you cannot rely on someone. Even though you have a very important things, in order to deposit your thing to the person, you must have a trust to the person. So first, look at him. He says a mini headings. The way to devote yourself in the place number 280. Yeah, the way to devote yourself to spiritual guide begins with four headings. The advantages of relying on spiritual guide. You know, if you rely on our teachers, what beneficial you going to have? First. Second, the disadvantages of not relying on spiritual guide. If you don't rely on spiritual guide, you know, what the you know, disadvantage for you? The next, the third one, devoting yourself through thought, devoting yourself through deeds. Okay, the first one, the advantages of relying on a spiritual guide. So, if you rely on master, what will be the beneficial? If you're not going to rely on a master, what will be the you know the what will the what will be the consequences, bad consequences? Then next one, the advantages of relying on a spiritual guide. So before you rely on our teacher, you must think, you know, if I rely on our teacher, I can have a lot of beneficial. If I'm not going to rely on our teacher, I'm going to have a lot of kind of, uh, I'm going to have a lot of loss. What is the opposite of the beneficial? Loss, the opposite of beneficial.
there's a lot of demand, they say, you know, it's an ad. Ad. You will come close to Buddhahood. The first one, okay? If you rely on the master, you will closer to Buddhahood. Page number 218. Second one, I think the best number twenty two.
I'm not just saying, you know, just teacher. I'm saying the, you know, the, the, the right teacher. When you meet uh, the right teacher, then you will be closer to the Buddhahood. Because you have a very strong or pure desire about achieving Buddhahood. And the teacher has all the right you know, methods, right techniques how to achieve you know, Buddhahood. There's been two kind of the right you know, factors come together. The disciple who has a pure you know, motivation, pure desire, you know, this strong mission for achieving, you know, to achieving Buddhahood. We have a very strong desire about Buddhahood. The teacher who you are going to rely on, you know, he or she has a, a right teaching, a right methods, a right that means the two come together, that means you are really closer to the Buddha. So it has a two subheading, right? You will be closer to the Buddha. I am uh, uh, sure you understand the differences between Buddhahood and Nirvana. The Buddhahood is Nirvana. Nirvana is not necessarily Buddhahood. Okay? The nirvana we usually in Sanskrit nirvana, nara is suffering. Suffering, nara is suffering. Nirva, nira, nira is suffering or problem. Nirvana is kind of you know beyond the suffering. That's been totally you know, overcome from the suffering. That's been you know the Pradika Buddha, Charvaka Buddha, they are totally you know overcome from suffering, they are totally beyond the suffering, but they, are, they, they haven't achieved Buddhahood. That's mean, you know, that's mean look like somebody has a very kind of peaceful mind, but they don't have a kind of, you know, enough, enough ability to understand everything. When you achieve Buddhahood, you have, you have a very peaceful mind all the time, as well as you have an ability to know everything precisely. For example, you know, someone just become a, became a doctor after finishing you know, their study, they become a doctor. They have a good knowledge, but they don't have an experience. You know, what kind of medicine I must give this patient, that patient. What kind of disease? It looks like very similar, you know, two patients have similar problems. If you think precisely, the, the, you know, the cause is different. So, if someone achieves Buddhahood, they have a, you know, all in a kind of knowledge, as well as they can teach you, you know, what kind of, they can teach you the, the right teaching, because the Buddha knows what kind of teaching is benefit for you? So you should not think Buddhahood and Nirvana is same. That's why you just think, yes, Buddhahood is Nirvana, Nirvana is not Buddhahood, not necessarily Buddhahood. Because Nirvana, you know, Nirvana means like a suffering. Nirvana is the beyond the suffering. Intimated we use the Nyang De. Nyangen, Nyang De. Nyangen is Nira, Nirva. Nir, nira, nirva, like beyond the, you know, nira, beyond the suffering. Buddhahood. Buddhahood is dependent, you know, Sangeet, Kopang. Usually we can say, you know, the superior, superior nirvana. So it has a true subheading. In my own guru, Dakur Rinpoche, oral tradition. So, Thakpo Namari he was, he was the you know, very important guru of Pabu Karimbuche. Very like, high practitioner. He has a lot of, he, he, he gave a lot of you know, uh, teachings from different masters. Thakpo is the Jambi Lulu, Thakpo When he was, you know, in the retreat, he never, kind of, he never, any, hard to see 
really has a is is smell. He always I think later on very cheaper. Most of he cry, 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 cry. Because when he later on very cheaper, he always remembers, remember all certain pain as a suffering, as a problem. Always, you know, cries. Then one day, you know, he he laughed very short time. Then somebody asked, usually you cry, why today you really laugh? They say, you know, there was uh, there was a person who is pulling up kind of piece of uh, wood, grass. The root is so deep that he was laughing. You know, Look at how he is ignorance. The root is so deep he cannot pull out. <laughs> so he was laugh kind of short. There's been that, this moment he understood, you know, ignoring his, uh, you know, kind of root of the, you know, problems. So it is a sub so the Purimuche, oral tradition. We subsidize we subdivide this heading into two. You will come closer to Buddhahood by practicing the instruction he taught you. The first. The second one, you will cross you will also come closer to Buddhahood by making offering to the Guru and serving him. So in the first one for us very you know easy to make sense. Okay. So you will come closer to Buddhahood by practicing the instruction he taught you, right? Very easy. If you practice what the teacher taught you, you're going to be closer to Buddhahood. It's very easy to understand. The second one, you will also come closer to Buddhahood by making offering to the Guru and serving him. It's so difficult to understand. That's mean, you know, if you offer anything to Guru, you become closer to Buddha. If you have a lot of a lot of give a lot of service to the Buddha, Guru, you become closer to Buddha. So difficult. That's why, you know, in Tibet, also in the in China, not much in I think uh, in the Thai and Burma and Shilaga, they don't talk much about you know lot of offering, lot of service for the Guru. In China, in Tibet, also you know, after the China and Indonesia, Malaysia, always talking about you know offering something to Guru. That's why we have our kind of uh, habit offering things to Guru. That's why many masters take advantage. Say, okay, I'm your Guru. You have to offer so many things to me, right? This is, you know, not good. So, if he is the right person, the right teacher, then you can offer it to them, then you're going to be closer to Buddha. But still, difficult to understand why. For example, you know, if I offer a piece of cake to my guru, how I, you know, closer to Buddha? How? Yes, I can accumulate merit. It doesn't mean I have to offer to Guru. I can offer to any anybody. And I can give a food for the dog and cat and fish. Same, I can accumulate merit. So it's so difficult to understand. But you know, next we can learn, you know, you will come closer to Buddhahood by practicing the instruction he taught you. It's very easy to understand.
one general benefit of the relying on the spiritual God is that you will get you will get nearer, nearer to Buddhahood, although his other path and their stage recover many fondness even to achieve Buddhahood. Some people can lead to this state in only one lifetime because they have not devoted themselves to the spiritual guide. A higher tantra true achieve this extremely quickly in Guru Yoga is the very life. How can you say this word? Life? Blood, blood. Blood or blood? Blood. Blood. Yeah. The tantric path. This can be seen for the complete. Example in in a Milarepa's life story. So generally, you know, so in order to achieve Buddha, Buddhahood, it takes in a long time. If you have a pure devotion to your guru, it, it, he can achieve Buddhahood, you know, within a short lifetime. Special, you know, when you practice Tantrayana, so you know, the devotion to guru is very important. Very, very important. That's why, you know. So, what do you really think? So, if you have a you know, pure devotion to your guru, do you think you, are, you can achieve without very quickly? What do you think? Do you think so? Or I'm not sure? <laughs> So because uh, if the guru is the right guru, then the methods that he teaches should be the right methods. So if we have full trust and rely on the guru, we will practice diligently the methods without any doubt. Then I think in that case the progress will be better than someone who do not trust and have a lot of thoughts in the mind whether is this the right one, then you won't go ahead and practice it. Yeah, you're right. That's why. So that's why we have to find the uh, you know the right teacher. That's when when you meet a right doctor, if the doctor always with you, he always with you, who has a knowledge or experience, if the doctor always with you, then, then the disease can the illness can be cured very quickly. Even though you have a guru, you know, you have a doctor, someday you can be the doctor today and you cannot be the doctor for a few days. This is take a long time to cure the illness. Same, you know, so you have you find the right teacher, the teacher is always with you, with you, with you. the teacher has a knowledge, and the teacher don't have any other kind of expectation from you. He has only one expectation, which is, you know, wish he become a, you know, Guru, Buddha, wish he achieve Buddha, this is the only expectation of teacher. Teacher doesn't have any expectation. So that's why when you meet, you know, the right Guru, then you can be very closer to the Buddha Guru, you know, the Guru devotion. So, so what is the difference between you know belief and devotion? Belief and Guru, devotion and Guru. What is the difference? Devotion, I think, is stronger than belief. Belief means uh, belief only in the mind, but I think devotion is body, speech, and mind, everything. Just rely Before, on the devotion, right? Yeah, full, People, fully you know, trust, including the life and everything. The faith. Faith and devotion is same or defense? Faith and devotion. Faith. 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 Yes, believe, you know, we can have a belief many people, yeah, different, different, have a different view. So now we need to see, yes, belief and devotion is, is not exactly the same. You know, faith has a three different types. Faith. One is kind of faith which is more really admire, types of ad admire. One is kind of faith it also is totally believed in. And another faith, uh, the, the, so which is, is faith is kind of you know wanting something. For example, the first one, you know, admire. So first, for example, when you see, 
someone doing really good thing. They have a very you know pure admire to their good deeds. Also it we call it faith. Second belief, you know, faith which is type of belief. So this is kind of the belief in law of causality. Yes, negative karma always produces the you know suffering. Positive karma always produces the you know the pleasant or happiness. If you have a really belief in truth, then we call you know also fair kind of belief types. Then one thing you know kind of one thing I hope you remember. We have a kind of you know two types of refuge. Refuge of the result refuge of the cause. Right now we which we have a we take refuge to Buddha Dharma Sangha, for example Buddha Shakyamuni, all the Sangha members, all the Dharma. This could be called, you know, the refuge of the cause, which is it cause for us to become Buddhahood. Refuge of cause. The refuge of the result. That's when after you go through the practice, when you become a Arya, then you become a Sangha among the three you do. This is kind of result of your practice. And the part which you practice is called the result of the Dharma. Then finally, when you achieve Buddhahood, you know, then you become a Buddha. It also is because, you know, you know a refuge of the, uh, a result of the Buddha. Then we have uh, two groups of, you know, refuge. One is our cause for our Buddhahood, one is totally kind of our own result. In Tibetan, we call, you know, yuya, when cause, you know, you know refuge of cause. Refuge of resort. This moment, when you take refuge to Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, you are taking refuge them as a, you know, your protector. Also, at the same time, you have a, you know, the fed towards your own future Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, your own future. Do you understand? So. When you see Buddha Shakyamuni statue, you, you have a kind of faith towards Buddha Shakyamuni. At the same time, you wish to achieve, wish to become a Buddha, right? That moment, you are focusing your own future Buddha, your own kind of future Buddha. That moment, you have a sense of wanting, right? A sense of wanting of this kind of Buddha, this kind of Dharma, this kind of Sangha. This man, faith has a two, three types. One is kind of admire, one is kind of believe, one is sense of wanting or wish to achieve. So faith, belief and faith is different. Faith has a three types. And faith and devotion. Devotion is kind of, you know, be totally divorced, it's totally kind of surrender and then you know Buddha or Dharma Sangha. So it's so difficult to differentiate between you know faith, belief, and devotion. So in Tibetan language we use only we say belief, iche, belief, and faith, the part. We, we don't use the name, you know, the, we don't have the term kind of devotion.
from your members. Um, unfortunately, uh, after the third time she visited the temple, she stopped going, but texted me and said, uh, I lost faith in uh, the Buddhism because uh, the third lesson she she, she gone to the, the temple. Um, she see the, um, the, 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 the monks are playing the game, mm -hmm. computer game, uh, during the teaching. Uh, so um, after that, she, she said, no, I'm not going. Uh, during the lesson and during the, the puja going on, the monks <laughs> went <again. laughs> uh, So she said she lost faith in Buddhism. That, but that is not what Buddha teaching that is uh, yeah, yeah. yeah dharma <laughs> what you see is the the, the the person's doing that but that uh, does not represent uh, buddhism or dharma yeah, yeah. the buddha's teaching so rely on teachers the right teacher is very very important if the, unfortunately for her case the first contact of buddhism is just that and she stopped yeah. That's why you know. And then we get blind faith as well. Uh -huh. We get blind faith. They talk about blind faith. Oh, yeah. and you actually, you just follow on from what everybody else is doing, but it's not true. Yeah, it's, it's no good. The blind faith also, you know, many people just go there because he or she is going there, I must go. Or it's good because he or she says so. Usually, we must, you know, everybody must differentiate. Buddhism and the follower of Buddhism. We can say yes, we can say, you know, confidently, we're going to say there's not any kind of problem in, in the Buddha Dharmas. But there are a lot of problems in, of, among the follower of Buddha Dharma. That means your sister, you know, first she believed, you know, Buddhism is good, but she saw someone, you know, playing game during the you know, chanting, they tell us, oh, Buddhism is no good. You know, she is not able to differentiate between Buddhism and the follower of the Buddha, Buddhism. So, you know, that's why in the future, any of you really want to, you know, you know, push someone into practice Dharma or, you know, believe in Dharma, you should not say you must go temple, read a books and so and so. You must teach through your own behavior. You know, be compassionate, you know, be patient, you know, more calm mind. Then they're going to the home. Come with me and you know, he or she, she has a more calm mind. I got something different. They're going to learn from you. That's on your experience. And gradually then you can start it, okay, you read this book and that book. If you tell them to somebody, you must read this book, and when he or she read the book, sometimes he or she makes sense the sentence. Sometimes they say, oh, it's not really makes sense. So each any time when you meet somebody interested in learning Dharma, you know, just teach through your behavior, through your action. It's so important. So so there's a true, you know, uh, subheading. You will come close to Buddhahood by practicing instruction in instruction he thought, he taught. Then he tell him a story about you know how it's important to rely on the gurus. On the page number 220, if we were to meet a Buddha, say we would say, I have met a Buddha higher than my guru. This may be well and good. So, he's, in this text, you know, mentioned more about, you know, generally, all Buddhas are very important. And in this moment, when you have strong desire about achieving Buddhahood, in that moment, your guru, gurus or guru are more important than the Buddha. Because, even though, you know, you have a, ability to see a Buddha. You have enough karma, you know, enough karma to be a Buddha. It, it, not, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, you know, a Buddha can give you the right teaching. 
you don't care if you are teaching, it doesn't it can be with a good benefit for you. Let's tell a story, you know, Sada Parudita. In Tibetan we call uh Tadunu. Tadunu. In Tibetan name is Tadunu. He said that Sada Prudita. So he met many Buddhas. But he never you know, satisfied the teaching from Buddha. Many Buddhas. That means you know, he, the Siddha Par, uh, uh, Parudita, doesn't have a you know, karmic relation with all the Buddhas. Even though he met many Buddhas, he still looked like a teacher, like a guru. That means, you know, for us, even though, you know, in this, you know, this time or this time, you can meet many, you know, gurus or many masters, some master can give you a right teaching. Even though the teaching doesn't have a, doesn't help you, you can have a lot of benefit. It doesn't, you know, fit in your mind. Somewhere you can feel, you know, you a sudden guru, you know, they talk a little bit about dharma, maybe 10 or 20 minutes, you can feel, wow, oh, it's really, I got a lot of benefit for them. That means, you know, you, you just understand, yes, this person must have a, I have a, must I have a karmic relationship. He doesn't have a karmic relationship. So, you know, Sadar Buddha Gita, he saw many Buddhas, homeless Buddhas, and he wasn't, you know, satisfied. He's still looking a guru. Finally, he met a guru named, you know, Dharmo Gatta, Chopa. In Tibetan we say Chopa. So he was really want to you know practice you know, dharma. He was looking a teacher. He met many guru, many buddhas. He was wasn't satisfied. He was crying all the time. He was searching for you another know, you know, guru. When he met Dramogata, so he was very happy. He totally satisfied. You know he achieved buddhahood very short time. At the same time, you can see the history of Miladepa. You know, the first Miladepa met a guru. The guru gave us instruction and teaching. So finally, the guru said, I don't think I can give you teaching. You must visit another guru. Another guru have a you know, good commitment with you. So for us, you know, if you really want to be a serious, serious practitioner, you need to find the teacher who has a karmic connection with you. More, you know, if you find that Guru has a karmic condition with you, it can have a lot of beneficial from them. So they tell a story about the next one. Now we learn, you know, you will also come closer to Buddha through making friends to the Guru and the serving him. A second one, if you can understand. <coughs> the first, there's a you know a quotation from Nagarjuna. Page number 221. If a person fall from the peak of the king of the mountains, he would still fall. Even, even though he thought, I shall not fall. If you receive beneficial teaching through the Guru's kindness, you will still be liberated. Though you think, I shall not be liberated. You know, someone fall from the peak of the mountain, he or she thinks, I'm not going to fall. I don't want to fall. There's no option he or she could fall from Monday. If you met the right te teacher, you should you think you are not going to be liberated, but you're going to be liberated. So this kind of quotation from Narajuna. The next one, you will also come closer to Buddha through the making friend to the Guru and serve, you know, serving them. So the next one, if you rely on a master, then you can make an offering or you can give a lot of you know, service to the Guru, then you're going to be closer to Buddha. Why? Now you learn. You must accumulate an immeasurable collection of you know, primal wisdom 
and merit right, in order to reach Buddhahood. But this huge collection is easily equate the best way in making offering to the Guru. As it is said, offering to the single form of the Guru, the superior is the merit in offering to the Buddhas of the ten direction into the Buddhasattvas. The Buddhas and the Buddhasattvas see when someone offering to the masters. So that means if you offering something to the, your Guru, it can have a lot of merit rather than the offering to the you know, ten directions Buddhas, all the Buddhasattvas. Then you can have a more benefit and beneficial offering to your own Guru rather than the Buddhas and the Buddhasattvas. Now you can see the main point because in this moment, you know, we, we everybody really want to practice Dharma. We don't have enough karma to see Buddha. We don't have enough karma to meet all Buddha. We have only karma to see the very ordinary Guru. So that means, you know, this is the only option. There's no any option. You, know, you must must develop on this group because you don't have any kind of ability to see what the Buddha. That moment, this guru, you know, which you're going to rely on, this guru is representative of all the Buddhas, all the Buddhasattvas. So that means, you know, <clears throat> for example, as a single plan, when you have a you know serious illness. You have only one option. Most of us have only one option. We must see doctor in Singapore. We don't have an option to see doctor in America, in Europe, in Japan, Korea, so and so. Because we don't have a resource. We don't have an ability to go there. That means we must rely on the doctor in Singapore. Same, as I it really want to be a <coughs> serious practitioner, we don't have a lot of option. We have only one option, which is you just rely on the Guru this moment which you find it. That means the Guru is representative of all the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. That means when you offer to something to the Buddha, something, something to the Guru, that means you are offering things to all the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. Because the Buddha is representative of all the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. <coughs> In other words, a study in many tantra and commentaries, it is more beneficial to make offering to the single part of the guru body than to all Buddhas and ten direction and their children in like the Buddha Sattva. Sagya Pandita says. So that means you know you should not think I'm going to accumulate a lot of merit to offering to the Buddhas than the gurus. You should think, you know, I'm going to accumulate more merit to offering to the Guru than the Buddhas and the Buddhasattvas. Because the Guru is, or the Gurus are representative of, of the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. So what, okay, I will ask you one question. What is the aspiration of Buddhas towards you? Aspiration, wishing towards you. All Buddha has a wishing towards you. All Buddha Sado has, Buddha Sado has, Sado has a wishing towards you. What do you think? For us to be Buddha. Yeah, want to become a Buddha, right? That means all parents has a wishing towards their children. Be a good person. You know, be educated. This is just wishing from parents. And then doesn't need money, things for the children. Does, they don't really care, you know, that children can give you money or food. Don't care. You wish to be a good person, a nice person, educated person. Same in all the Buddhas and Buddhist organizers, just one wishing to help you, you know, become a Buddha, achieve Buddha. This is the wishing or aspiration of Buddhas. That means when you offering something to your, your Guru, that means you are doing, doing 
little bit good thing. That's been all Buddhas and Buddhists was very happy. For example, you know, your children, generally your children are you know, not that good. Sometimes they did something good. You are so pleased, you are so happy. So that's been, you know, so if you offer something to Guru, that's been you are offering thing to all the Buddha and Bodhisattvas. <coughs> Does it actually have to be a physical offering though? Because if you're actually practicing and showing that you are following. This is a really good question. Does because that offering, offering, we have a two types of offering, yeah. you know. We call it offering of the material things. Yeah. Offering of the um, to be children, something to children. Offering of the kind of practice, yeah. behavior, yeah. practice. Compared with two of them, as a guru, the practice are more important than the materials. Yeah. Okay. So, Padmama, that's why I say in one of the high practice I said, you know, the guru always pleased with your practice rather than the, your the materials. And also you can see, you know, in the modern time, you know, many gurus doesn't care their student practice. They really care their wealth, offering wealth. You know, some student, you know, offering a lot of money, a lot of things, the guru always happy with that particular students. They really don't care about the practice. It's not good thought. As a, you know, is a P, B, B, you know, pure practice, you know, teacher, they must not, you know, care about their practice rather than the offering. So it's, in this moment is opposite. That's why we should think this way, you know. He already says last year, many people, many countries, many groups celebrate, you know, birthday party. Then he said, if somebody asked me to, Ask me what kind of gift do you need? If you practice compassion, this is the best gift for me. Practice compassion, be kind, be compassion. This is the best gift for me. That's why he should always think about the practice, the, the, the mental gift rather than the physical things. So, yeah. So, even though offering the material things to the guru, you know. It's, it's just not just, you know, we are not just talking about, you know, it's just ordinary person. We are talking, you know, for example, you are really want to achieve Buddha. You are really looking at the right teacher. When you meet the right teacher, then you can offer food and cause whatever you want. And that's mean, for that reason, you are creating more merits. Not only that, if you offer this thing to your guru, that means you are offering thing to the, your, you know, uh, all the Buddhas and Buddhists Because the Guru is the representative, it's an agency. Or it's a, better to say, representative of Buddhas and Buddhists Why representative? Why? Because, for example, <coughs> for us, you know, Buddha Shakyam Manewa <coughs> appeared in India 2000 years ago. We didn't meet her, him and Manjushiri. All of the show us so many Buddhas came to on the planet. We don't meet. We didn't meet them. And even to this moment there are so many, you know, you know, high practitioners all over the world. Unfortunately, you know, we haven't met them. So that's when that's when, when you receive it, the, the guru which you receive the teacher is the only one who can give you the instruction. So so you know in the future, you know because in Singapore, I know, you know, sometimes, you know, some very high, you know, very famous people come and comes and they give initiation. Everybody rush and go to see initiation. So before you, you know, receive any initiation, you must get the, you know, good information about teacher. So for us, I don't think we are really liking about receiving teaching. We have enough receive teaching. You know, we receive many teachings. But for us, more important is practice. While you practice, during the practice, 
The new funds come up with some difficulties understanding this and that, but you must ask your guru. In the future, you should not go. You just attend in your kind of, attend as a kind of evidence, just go and be there. You, sh you shouldn't have to be kind of accept you know, he or she as your guru. So that's why yeah. I, because I think you say uh, guru, you need to have a karmic relationship. Mm -hmm. So am I right to say we can actually serve many uh, practitioners as teacher, but for guru, we only have one guru, and it's dependent on our karmic, whether can we see this uh, guru this lifetime. Am I right to say that we only can have one root guru, but we can uh, receive teaching and serve uh, teacher practitioners. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you should have a uh, we should not also we we should have a uh, respect, you know, all gurus or all masters. We should have a uh, respect. It's okay we should serve, we can you know offer them to them, but we should not accept them as a guru. Second, you can have a uh, one guru, you can have a uh, two gurus or three gurus. This depends on you. First, you must check. It's look like you know I have a kind of commit, you know, previous karmic connection with the guru. If you find yes, there must be something, you know, connection, some connection, then you can rely on that. And also, you know, the karmic connection. <coughs> I don't think. We, you cannot find one person who, who doesn't have any you know, karmic connection with you. You know, everybody has a connection. This love and this and so and so. The guru is different. For example, you know, <coughs> after finished teaching, so we have a kind of break or chanting about, you know, long life puja, so and so. At that moment, the many gurus pray, oh, you know, today I give this teaching to these people. In the future, I always, always will give teaching for them. That's in that moment the guru has making connection with the disabled. This kind of, we talking about this connection, <coughs> you know. And also from the disabled side, you know, always, you know, green pray, kind of, have a praying or a chanting say, okay, you know, I wish I should, you know, always meet this guru in the future. That's when you are making this connection, this kind of connection. So that's why, you know, the, the story about talking the Dharmogata and Sada Buddha Gita. So Sada Buddha is a disciple, Dharmogata is a teacher. So even you know he made many gurus, but he doesn't get a lot of beneficial for other gurus. When he made the Dhammokada, he get a lot of beneficial. So that's why according to Tantrayana teaching, mention you know, even though you make you make sure you want to rely on the master, you must test for twelve years. You must check, you must test for twelve years. Twelve years. Twelve years. Yeah, yeah, twelve years. Yeah. We, we, even though we don't check, we just go and get initiation. <laughs> but okay. the guru must accept you as students. You cannot say you are my guru, but if the guru don't feel that you are my student, so there is no yeah, yeah. way. Yeah. You know, the disciple must request to the person, be, you, be, you are, be my guru. And also the guru must know, yes, I must accept, you know, he or she as my disciple. That's why, you know, when Adisha in Tibet, somebody asked, give me instruction, give me teaching. Adisha didn't say anything, he just reminded like this. He didn't say anything. Then the person thought, you know, oh, Adisha didn't, you know, hear about his request. He says strongly. Radisha said, 
My hair is okay. <laughs> it's okay, I can hear very well. You know, the instruction must develop, you know, must cultivate, you know, faith to your guru. He ask instruction. The instruction means you must cultivate, you know, pure faith towards your guru. That means this is the root, you know, the seeds of the practice. So yes, that's why when you even though according to you know like the Buddhist tradition, somebody requests to you give a teaching, the first thing you know they you know they reject. Second time they reject. The third time they accept. According to Tibetan tradition, we have to request three times to Guru give a teaching. You know, first, second, third, and third time going to accept giving teaching. Also same, you know, when you request to someone to be your teacher, you have to request few time. Then the teacher knows yes, good, you go to accept this good. You know, it's simple. Okay, the, the second beneficial <clears throat> in please the victorious one. There are two ways to think about this heading. The Buddhas of the Ten Directions are willing to teach you Dharma, but you are not even fortunate enough to see the spirit Nirmakaya, let alone the Sambhukakaya, because they appear only to ordinary beings with you know, pure karma. So these are another beneficial you know. So if you rely on your teacher, Guru, all the Buddhas, Vitoriyas, please for you. He says that two kind of two different ways you do thing. All the Buddhas, you know, the Buddhas of the ten direction are willing to teach you Dharma, but you are not even fortunate enough to see the supreme Nirmakaya. Let alone the Sambhuga Kaya. You don't have enough, you know, kind of, we are not enough fortunate to see Sambhuga Kaya, Dharma Kaya. We have only fortunate, we, have, we, have, we are enough fortunate to see the Guru. So, because the, the, all the Sambhuga Kaya and Dharma Kaya appear only ordinary being with pure karma. So also we should think, you know, once you rely on the Guru, you should think the Guru is manifestation of all the Buddhas, all the Buddhisattvas. So that's why I tell you the story about, you know, Mitriya Buddha. Asanga, he has a very difficult to understand the meaning of Parja Paramita. Because he's, he, he's you know, repeat many times, hundred or thousand of repeat the same meaning again and again and again, again. So he has a difficulty understanding the meaning. So he thought, you know, I, I must ask Mitriya Buddha. Because Mitriya Buddha was there when Buddha Shakyamuni Jiva Parja Paramita teaching. And he was doing kind of, you know, meditation on Mitya Buddha for I think 12 years. For six, uh, three years, he thought, oh, I don't think I can see Mitya Buddha. He's going to give up, right? So he come out from the cave, then he saw one bird flying from east to west every day one time. Each time he felt his wing touched to the rock. He saw, he see the rock become color clean. He thought, oh, why not I put more, you know, effort? Because the, 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 the wind can make a kind of clean on the rock. After six years, he thought, oh, I'm not going to see Mithira Buddha. I should give up. And he come out from the camp. He met a, you know, old men who are, who are polishing a kind of thick iron with a cotton polishing. If he has one dream, I always I make it a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's a oh, it's very intelligent, you know, and very kind of effort person. I must go back and practice again. And 
after 12 years, and he totally give up. You know, he come out the cat. On the way, he saw a dog have a lot of worm, a lot of insect worm. He, he have very, he had great compassion. He want to save the dog. In order to save the dog, he had to remove all the you know worm. But he thought, in even though you know, I can, I can save the dog, all the worm will be dead. What should I do? And he cut his you know, uh, meat from the uh, leg and put all the gem in order. He cut his uh, uh, lamb, right? Limb. And he wants to remove the you know, worm, but he cannot move from his hand. He just wants to move by his lip. You know? So he tried to remove the worm. He cannot touch the you know the dog. So when he opened his eyes he saw Vijay Buddha over there, the failure, due to you know his compassion. And he asked, I have been you know practicing for twelve years, you cannot I can't see you. You are so you know you're not compassion, not enough compassion. <laughs> and he said, no no I always with you. You 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 have enough you don't have enough karma to see me. I was with you all the time in the camp. You don't, you know, believe me. Just look at, you know, the asanga, you know, split, is it split, split everywhere. Throw all his clothes, nuclear clothes. <laughs> then, even though asanga has a dog, he then he said, if you don't believe me, you just carry me on your shoulder, walk around the, you know, village. And when Asanga carried Mitra Buddha on his shoulder, he walked around the village. You know, only one person saw Asanga carry a dog on the shoulder. Nobody saw anything. No dog, nothing. Only one person saw Asanga carry a dog on his shoulder. And then Mitra said, look at it. The person was enough karma, he had enough karma to see me as a dog. Otherwise, he not going to see me as a dog. That's when you know we are you know we are very fortunate. You know we have enough kind of enough fortunate to see meet a guru. So we should tell ourselves you know I'm very lucky to see my guru as a human being, not as a dog. You know, so that's why. So one you should think you know all the Buddhas and Buddhas are the please. When I release on Buddha, uh, rely on the Guru, because the Guru is representative of all the Buddha, Buddha Sattva. And even though all the Buddhas and Buddha Sattvas are willing to teach the Dharma to you, to us, but there's no way we can receive the teaching from them. What is it now? 350. 350. 350. 150. We have a time, right? We have a time? The second is please the victorious one. The next one, if you do not rely properly on your guru, you will not please the Buddhas, no matter how many offering you make to them. That's when it, it makes sense, alright? So we rely on the guru. So the Guru is the only one who can give you instruction, who can give you teaching. So if you, you know, properly love the Guru, all the Buddhas and all the Buddhists are really pleased to you because you are doing the right things. If you, if you have a Guru, if you not rely on the Guru either properly, even though you make a lot of offering to the Buddhas and Buddhists are they are not really pleased about your offering. Because you're not, you know, kind of rely on the Guru and properly. So once you rely on the Guru, you must rely on your Guru, on your Guru in the right way. The next one, you will not be disturbed by devil or bad company. So here, the devil not referring to the external demons. Demon is talking about the inner, you know, demons. So, for example, 
one, when you follow the instruction from your guru, the guru told you, you know, shouldn't have an angry practice condition. When you practice condition, the angry anger never disturb you. Okay. Then, when you have a less inner negative emotion, when you have a less external enemy, when you have a less inner emotion, then you have a less external demons. So, do you believe in the like a demons? Bad spirit? Believe? Really? Yeah. Do you believe demons? No, really? Why not? Superstition. Why? Just a Just a No Okay. How many of you believe in kind of this kind of demons? You, you. Anybody have seen? No. Experience. Yes. Experience. Um. Not. Uh, they are just wonder spirits. Yeah. For me, I never have any kind of experience about the bed screen, you know, the demons or never There are some wonder spirits around. Um, may not see them, but they do some actions. Um, my my experience is when I stay in the one one of the five star hotel in Bukit um, at night. When after the meeting, I was very tired. I would go to bed, but the 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 the, the Tap the tap, on, off, on, off. You can put it up again, on again, and off again. And play with my lipsticks on the table. Roll down to the carpets, uh, which is at night. So <laughs> <laughs> because oh, I, <laughs> but I was too tired after a long day meeting. Um, I didn't have the compassion to, so I just shut, shut up. I'm very tired. Please don't play. Don't disturb me. I'm very tired. So stop. <laughs> Second day, the same thing repeat again. And again, because I was too tired, I have no time to pray for the, 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 the I believe it's a small kid. I just got no time for that <laughs> and, and too tired for that. I just say, shut up. I'm very tired. Please go away. Don't disturb me. So go away. From third day onwards, never come. Yeah. Then uh, I believe it's a, the, the, a, a small one, just a place. Which, which language do you use, use that time? Hotel? Which language? Language. <laughs> uh, in, in English. <laughs> but that Actually, was in Thailand. In Western English? I, I don't know, but <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> they, uh, the spirit may not understand uh, the language, but it's the, the tone or the sound um, that the, the, the spirit may. Uh, understand that I was very fat and brief <laughs> <laughs> and uh, raised my voice, so just go away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another one is my sisters who stay, used to stay at the uh, reservoir, uh, one of the, the housing board, mm -hmm. long time ago. Um, they, there, there was sounds like playing basketball just above the, the, the uh, flat. And the kids always see uncle behind uh, my my sister mm -hmm. uh, when she's trying to bathe the, 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 the kids. The kids at that time the, the girl was only uh, one and a half, two, but can speak. Mommy, who is the uncle behind you? And, mm -hmm. and things like that. But uh, it, it always happened even daytime, you know. They play with the switch on off play, but I believe again it's kids. And I understand uh, with the reservoir that site is during the uh, Second uh, World War, mm -hmm. a lot of Japanese shooting, mm -hmm. a lot of people died uh, at that time. So they built um, on, on those graveyards. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they have a Catholic father priest come to do the Sunday prayer, mm -hmm. groups of prayer every Sunday going on, but still happen. And my, the, the adults, my sister and the, my brother-in-law, they are not afraid because they are used to it. Mm -hmm. But it's no good for the young children. That's why they move out. Mm -hmm. 
but when I was there, uh, to, to, to go around the place, there's nothing. But I got my uh, uh, Dharma, one of the uh, sister, Dharma sisters, to go and have a look. And she told, she told me it's, it's, it's a small, small uh, spirit, a, a young one. So she got the young one locked in the storeroom and let the person, uh, the, the spirit stay there till my sister and the family moved out. So I, uh, I did not see in my naked eyes, but that, that was my experience. Anybody else have any experience? No? But Dikshila, demon and spirits are different, right? Yeah, because different. Um, yeah. they are considered yeah, yeah. of a lower rank, but they may not be a demon, yeah. right? So. Super. Uh, in Buddhist tradition, we mention the six jiyam, right? Yeah, yeah. Human and animal and holy gods and demi gods and gods, you know, six. The, 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 the spirit things is included in the animal or maybe included in the human. Very interesting, look at One way, we believe, you know, or the, the spirit is kind of is person or is kind of being or ascendant beings. Spirit not only about only consciousness. It has a body. Right? It has a body. It has a very subtle body. It, it, it is a very subtle body, subtle as then the you know the very kind of the subtle uh, substance. It's so subtle how it can bomb in a an object is so subtle how we can bomb their body to other object. If there's no bomb other object, how is sound comes? Sound. So you know you are talking about playing basketball. Okay? <laughs> so how they touch the basketball is so yeah. subtle. And also this mean it's so difficult really to say there's a is real is it exists in the, in the reality level or is kind of dreaming or kind of I'm not sure about this. For example, the one time I went by MRT from uh, actually I I want to go to uh, yeah. Uh, there's a park. Anyway. I just sit on the train at uh, uh, Autumn Park. Autumn Park. I want to go to the Autumn Park. I know, I haven't reached there. I have, there's another two, three stop, you know. When I opened my eyes, I was there. And I thought, how I come here? It's so <laughs> quick. I thought, it's so quick. That's when I slept. Mm. I slept on the train. <laughs> then I thought, it's so quick. Actually, I sleep. It's not quick. The train is not run the quick. I sleep. Sometimes you know we have a kind of half, half sleep. When you feel so tired, you are so tired, you're so tired, your half mind is already sleep, half mind is open. That means you can see something like stench. You really you know open your eyes, look very carefully, nothing there. Something is happening by you know so feel tired, half sleepy, half awake. Is that right? Then you know sleep. The notion is kind of spirit is kind of being or is just consciousness or what spirit? And the Christians of body in the speech and mind because God, Father, Father, Son, Holy God, Spirit. Holy Spirit, this Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. They used yes. to say Holy Ghost Holy and then they changed to Holy Spirit. Yeah, what does it mean the spirit? <laughs> <laughs> So the spirit is not that that that, that the spirit we're talking yeah, about, yeah. but it's uh, in in our Buddhist term is actually Buddhist atwa. So it's there it is equivalent to our Buddhist atwa, mm -hmm. but not the spirit we're talking okay, about. Okay, so the, the now we're talking about the bed spirit. Mm. Yes. What does it look like? What is actually it is? Not everybody can see. Somebody like my my uh, grand uncle, uh, younger time. Mm -hmm used to see people around so he, he would tell uh, even now I have a friend 
who she is a doctor. She is a doctor practice in Singapore General Hospital. Mm. She can see. Mm. Uh, sometimes uh, we go to visit her house. She she just say, uh, please go this way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please don't sit there. Uh, <laughs> and things like that. Uh, but she's a doctor. <laughs> and she's a uh, Buddhist also. But no. <laughs> okay, so the, you know the. Next one, you will not be disturbed by demons and the bad company. The next one, you will automatically put a stop to all illusion and mistake. Yes, if you rely on the power teacher, no more any kind of delusion, no more mistake. The next one, you insert and the realization into the levels and the path will increase. Okay, I think we just uh, stop here. So next time, we will be going to remember uh, the app beneficial of relying on the teachers. App beneficial is kind of homework. And why, you know, the, each, each has a reason. Just everybody must explain each reason after them. will also come closer to Buddhahood through making offerings to the Guru and serving him. So there is an example by saying that I get greater merit by giving food to my Guru's dog than by teaching the Sangha of the Tola about making offerings. Yeah. <laughs> so my question is, if you say that the weightage of offering, because it's more powerful to make For example, the Guru has a head here, has his own dog. If you give some gift to the dog and the teacher is so happy, <laughs> the teacher is so happy about giving gift to the dog. That means you are giving the food to the dog. That means you are giving kind of gift to the teacher. So you the teacher please is, your teacher. Yeah. You please pleasing your teacher. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So we decide the prayer.